everyone, and welcome to Career Trajectories. Uh, so by the end of this lesson, uh, I hope that you will be able to identify, let's say, at least two uh, different trajectories that uh, might be a good fit for you. Um, so to start with, um, let's start getting a great big list going. So I would like everyone to take, let's say, five minutes or so. And um, wherever you're, like, you've been looking for jobs, wherever you were researching and you're like, I think I, maybe I want to get into tech, um, look around on some different things. Look on uh, the gigs posts on uh, Denver Des, tons of them recently. And let's just try to get a big list of titles going um, or any that you've kind of been curious about. Let's build a big list of titles, five minutes, go. Oh, two minutes.
All right, so let's start a list. All right, we're gonna do this round robin style. Uh, Gerald, give me one. Uh, unmute. Sorry about that. My uh, things got moved around. No problem. Uh, one, uh, I noticed recently a front end position by Amazon dealing mostly, mostly with microservices and uh, React. Okay. So front end microservices React and Amazon. Uh, Sydney, give me another uh, job you found title. Uh, Sonder Mines, it's a front end uh, engineer. Another front end engineer. Uh, Sonder Mine. Saw that from Scott Moore. Scott Moore is my pal. Um, very nice. Paige, give me another job title. Um, I guess just there's a lot of just like software engineer and then like one, two, three, like Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. Uh, Kelsey. Um, this one's like really specific, but it's this media and art pipeline developer at Disney. Um, it's like basically making like their 3D models like for the parks and rides, but I'll send the description or the listing in the chat. Cool. Um, Junior, what you got? Um, I got a React JS developer through Full Stack Labs. Cool. Uh, Tiffany, what'd you find? Uh, full Stack Web Developer for, or Full Stack Engineer for Sticky Leaf software. Cool. Music, what'd you find? Um, <laughs> a full stack software engineer for FinTechture. Cool. Alex, give me another job title. Um, DevOps engineer. Yeah. Very nice. DJ, give me another job title. A software engineer for iHeartMedia. Okay, Kyle, give me another uh, job title. Um, software engineer dash robotics. It's from Prime Robotics. Okay, uh, Marcos, thank you came okay. in late. Uh, what's a job title you've seen? New one. Uh, so I went for fun and engineer at Amazon Web Services. Okay. Uh, Eric Christine, what's a job title that you've seen? New one. Oop, I don't hear, I don't hear Eric. Um, all right, back over to Gerald. Uh, give me another job title. One that we don't have on the list already. Um. So what else have I seen lately? Um, I keep getting something for uh, from Metro for a media lab um, coordinator. Okay. I don't remember offhand what the um, specs were though for what they were looking for. That's fine, we just need titles. Sydney, give me one we don't have already. Uh, Gusto, it's, oh wait, no, because that's. That's the company. What's yeah. The, uh, what's the title? It's another front end engineer. I don't think that counts. Yeah, oh, different yeah. title. You have another one. It's not on the list already. I know there's a UX UI designer available. Yeah. Very nice. Paige, give me another one. Um, 
this one is like software engineer dash big data analytics. Cool. Oshiro, give me a, another title. Ooh, I was just looking at this UX UI one, but I think Sydney just said that. Yep. Give me another title. Um, how about uh, there's this junior software engineer top secret clearance. <laughs> I oh. don't know. Something with security. <laughs> Cool. Um, junior, any new titles? Uh, junior software engineer, um, NG1, DSOFT technology. Okay, so got lots of that kind of stuff. Any other titles? I'm open up to anybody. So We've covered like 10% of the industry. I have a, I have a bunch, uh, systems engineer. Uh, principal engineer and data engineers. Um, I have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tiffany. Um, I have subscriptions engineer, platform okay. engineer. What was the second one? Platform engineer. Platform engineer. I have. I have software development engineer, dash advertising. Um, this is for the Atlantic experimental storytelling software engineer. Sweet. Test engineering. There we go. Direct uh, engineering. What was this? Uh, what was that last one? Director of engineering. Director of engineering. Thank you. Keep them coming. A uh, back end engineer. What else? Field services technician. Yes. Site reliability. Uh, SREs. That's what uh, Kimberly does. Front end theme developer. Theme developer. What else? SEO engineer. Surprised that's still a thing, but yes. What else? Embedded software developer. Yeah. More titles. Data analyst. What else? Um, like QA. Good. Data and delivery engineer. Keep them coming. Product manager? Yeah. Uh, machine learning. Good. What else? Android and iOS developer. What else? Bioinformatics programmer. What else? Tech educator. Near and dear to my heart. That's what I do. What else? IT is kind of general, but would IT something or rather fit in there? Absolutely. I feel like That's I've seen like specific like Salesforce engineer. Mm, yes, you have. <laughs> Ethical hacker. What else? Solutions architect. There we go. I've been looking for that one for a while. What else? Another specific one's uh, ServiceNow developer. Mm -hmm. 
uh, API web SQL developer. Uh, API, what was the, what was the title? Web slash SQL developer. Data modeler? Yeah. Other titles. You got a software architect. Yeah. Are a lot of these titles just like the same title for the same job? Correct. Uh, not all of them, but lots of them are the same job. Any other ones? We got about half the industry now. Financial. What was that? Uh, I saw game designer. Yep, we got games. We got networking engineer. Networking engineer. Machine learning. We got we got machine learning. Oh, we do. Oh. XR developer. Does consultant count? Yes, it does. Uh, do we already have robotics? Uh, kind of. Uh, platform backend engineer. Uh, we got we got platform. Okay. I haven't heard anybody language say language design. Now. What was that? Like language design, compiler, language design. Compiler and language design, like that. Uh, automation. Does tech recruiter count, or is that not? That's like kind of like adjacent. It does. Okay. Cool. Michael, my boy, got a job doing that. Um, also, I haven't heard anybody say sales engineer. Uh, people development and culture lead. Anything else? Can, do people sometimes go for project management as well? Oh, why, yes, they do. Anything else? Engagement manager. <laughs> Team engineer. What was the what was that, Marcos? Blockchain. Blockchain. Engineer. There we go. Anything else? Cloud application. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Freelance programmer. Freelancing. I mean, I guess data scientist. I'd say. Anything else? There are four disciplines at Flatiron. We haven't even talked about one of them yet. Web developer. That wasn't it. Did we already say instructor? Uh, yeah. Cybersecurity. Uh, what was that, Marcos? Cybersecurity. Cybersecurity. Uh... And there's a ton of different jobs in there. All right, let's start categorizing these. So a lot of these are the same, uh, or at least have a lot in common. So some categories. Um, I'll call it just general development. So some things that you'll see in here. First thing, engineer, programmer, uh, developer, coder, anything like with that prefix on it is the exact same thing. There is no difference 
practically in the industry between any of these. Uh, so if you see web developer one and software engineer one, like those aren't necessarily different jobs. Like some, some organizations will treat them that way and you'll certainly find no shortage of people on Twitter who think that like, well, an engineer is like a programmer except morally superior, um, completely fucking made up. Uh, they're all the same thing. So um, within those, there are uh, a bunch of different kinds of ladders, but some common ones are junior. We call mid, that almost never shows up on the title itself, but you might be a junior software engineer and then a software engineer and then like a senior software engineer. Um, uh, so just something that doesn't have a qualifier on it is generally referred to as a mid. Um, those line up with one, two, and three. Um, sometimes like they'll also be like an associate. That's usually kind of like on this ladder. Um, after that, then um, these aren't standardized, but that's kind of like one tier past that sometimes you'll have like a uh, staff is like a common thing after senior principal is usually after that um, and then architect is usually after that and so like that's one trajectory like that uh, moves into this and this one two three thing also ends up usually using a, a similar kind of thing um cool so most organizations now increasingly are starting to do what, what are called split ladders so that'll be one direction you can go off of this and then the other direction you could go off of that is into management so you might be some kind of manager followed by some kind of director followed by some kind of uh, VP and so that'll be a, a trajectory also and then there's a, there's an equivalent concept on this other trajectory to VP called fellow usually they see it at really big companies but like Google probably has three or four fellows that are uh, equivalent to vice president but none of these people manage anyone. Um, and these people generally don't actually code anymore. Um, these people also like often don't code so much, but they do research, they do analysis, they do um, judgment, like a lot of that kind of stuff on, uh, on code. Where would right. lead fall in there? Oh, lead uh, is probably equivalent to staff and principal. And uh, okay, so that's development. Some other modifiers that you sometimes see on this. Front end, back end. Um, you might see full stack, you might see um, iOS, Android, you might see some other uh, React, PHP, you might see some modifier on these. It's the same thing. Like it, those tend to follow like the same ladder. Um, I think it's, like, and this is just old man Coberly's opinion, but I think that we carve this up way too small as an industry. I don't like the idea of front end engineers and back end engineers. That's a ridiculous idea. Kyle, um, do you think that, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, do you think that people can get pigeonholed into those roles? And like, if you become a front end engineer in your first role, you'll only get jobs in that generally? Not really. Like it's pretty easy to, to move around a little bit. It probably gets harder, not even just from like a, 
like a pigeonholing standpoint, but if you don't write any front end code for the next five years, you'll get bad at it. <laughs> so like, it might be hard for you to get work from that standpoint. Um, but like for your first job in particular, find a cool job and take it. Like don't get too hung up on like what the particular technologies or part of the stack or whatever is. Um, and whatever, you may find that like databases are your love and you don't want to touch CSS again for the rest of your life. Like that stuff is up to you. But from my standpoint, like I, I think that picking a part of the stack is a very strange way to slice that. What I'd rather do is um, slice that up by industry segment or something like that. Like I only do web stuff. I don't do native stuff. I don't do games. I don't do, but that'd be another one that's in here. Uh, I don't do really anything outside of web. I don't do embedded. Um, and like, I have no interest in that, but within web, I do front end, back end, databases, design, you fucking name it. Um, and I think that that's, that's a more sound way, I think, to split that up. That's something that not everybody agrees with me on. And as you'll see within a company, they sometimes slice up these roles pretty finely, but they all generally have a similar kind of shape to this. Questions about this like development category. So it, say, uh, go ahead, Sydney. So say if you wanted to branch out from this block, mm -hmm. is that difficult or is it just a matter of making that jump? Easier to go from development to uh, one of the other categories and the other way around. Um, and all of them are easier to move between than what you guys are now. Going from student to employed is probably more difficult than going from like IT to development. Not trying to be discouraging, just being real with you. The good news is that like this first job search is the hardest one you'll have in your career. It's always hard. It's always discouraging. It's always tons of rejection, but not like the first time. It's the engineer hazing. Yep. <laughs> well, like, so the thing about software engineering, it's like one of the most beautiful things about it is that there are no formal gatekeepers. You don't have to get a license. You don't have to go to school for 11 years. You don't have to do any of that shit. Um, if you can do the job, then there's probably somebody who wants to hire you to do it. Now, also because of that, there's a lot of people who go, holy shit, I can make how much money? Yeah, sure, whatever. I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I'm a real fast learner. Uh, and they're hoping they can just bullshit their way through the job long enough to figure it out. So uh, we have a very skeptical interviewing process for people with that experience. There's all kinds of stupid puzzles and shit you have to do in the interview process that other industries really don't have to put up with. So those two things kind of go together. Usually with these modifiers, mm -hmm. they're expecting you to display somehow either in your resume with experience, these sorts of specializations or like, because we're all going to be like full stack developers, but right. like for an iOS developer, they would want to see probably that specialization somewhere. I don't know. Depends on like where in this ladder you're applying for. You could apply for like a junior iOS engineer or a mid-level iOS engineer without having ever touched iOS. That'd be fine. Oh, okay. Uh, it would be perhaps a little bit harder to go higher up the ladder, but fuck, even that. Like, I think I have some developer, had some developer title at Flatiron. Um, it was like principal engineer or something. It usually comes with uh, the tech education jobs. Um, I'd never written a line of Ruby in my life before uh, starting teaching here. Or my last job, I was a technical lead. Um, uh, and the back end was all Laravel. I had never written a line of Laravel before I started that job. Um, 
So no, I don't think the modifiers are like, oh, you better show up with a lot of that kind of stuff. But it probably helps to be familiar with what those things are so you can talk about which things you think will transfer over directly and which things like you're going to want a little patience on. So I, and I guess this is technically the point of capstones. If you can genuinely prove that you learned a like difficult or semi-difficult language within that short amount of time and you can translate that, those skills, does that hold weight in an interview? Yep. Okay. Uh, so the thing you never want to say in an interview is, well, I'm a fast learner. That is like instant shut it down territory uh, because everybody says that. Like, it's weird. Once you start interviewing people, you'll see these patterns that like your career coach and everybody has been quacking at you about because you'll see the exact same mistakes over and over and over again. And she'll go like, uh, all right, so it's an iOS job. You don't really have any uh, iOS experience. So he goes, well, I'm a really fast learner. So, ah, fucking A, man. What you want to do instead is show, don't tell. You go, all right, so man, this is an iOS job. Uh, you don't have uh, really any iOS experience. Like, how do you expect to overcome that? You go, well, you know what? Uh, I didn't actually have any Python experience before I started my capstone. And in like two and a half weeks, I was able to put together this app that did this and this and this. Um, and so I actually feel fairly confident that I could uh, pick up iOS and be like up to speed and contributing on your team very quickly. Write evidence, don't just say shit. Other questions about development land? Cool. Let's look at some other categories. This is like, oh, actually one other distinction I wanna make in development world is um, it's like three kind of big categories, I would say of companies that you work for. So a non-tech company would be something where the technology isn't their product. So if you go, you can go get a job as a developer for a beer company, um, every company is a tech company. Every company needs like people who can do this kind of stuff, um, not just sexy software startups. Um, and so that's also the case with a lot of industries that you've already worked in, companies you've already worked for. Like, um, like it, it's entirely possible that they need developers too. Like I came from the music industry. They hire developers, they hire CIOs, they hire all kinds of stuff. So that's like a category of company you might work for. And there's startups, um, which startups are like the fastest way you can move through your career. They're also the hardest jobs to get. Uh, they're the most flaky. Um, it's not weird to have a new startup job every six months. Like there's a lot of other industries where something like that would be frowned upon, but in startup land, like the companies don't even last that long most of the time. So um, you can accelerate your career crazy fucking fast by working for startups, but they're hard jobs to get. They're stressful. You have to wear a lot of different hats. Um, you're a six person company. You probably don't have like a separate front end and back end and designer and salesperson and marketer. Like all of you probably do some of all of that. Um, also probably hard -er jobs, I think for bootcamp grads uh, to get, but like ha happens all the time. It's just hard. And then uh, enterprise, I guess, would be my third category. So enterprise stuff, um, it's like a little bit more secure. It's really easy to exaggerate how much more secure an enterprise is than a startup. Because while like Charles Schwab probably isn't going out of business next week and your startup might be, uh, Charles Schwab also might eliminate your division tomorrow. Um, and like your login just will stop working. Uh, so like... It's, uh, it's very easy to, to overthink how secure the enterprise jobs are. Um, they, uh, they generally pay less than startups do and your career accelerates slower. However, you're probably more likely to get uh, more mentorship, more guidance. Um, and so if you want like a lot of structure and a lot of assistance, you're probably more likely to get that in an enterprise than you are in a startup. Um, now, 
you're also probably going to be working on like more boring technology. So Java, C sharp, um, some version of Angular that got discontinued 10 years ago. Like you see a lot more of that kind of stuff. Just in general, the tech is usually worse in enterprise, which is weird because they talk about their the shit that they do. Like it's, oh, well, you do your goofy little startup toy projects here in enterprise land. We do real software uh, at a massive scale. And it's like, yeah, really badly. <laughs> have, you, have you ever used... Something like Comcast, you use it like a com the Comcast website or something. You probably don't think like, wow, this is really impressive how good a job they did on this. <laughs> so uh, those are three categories that like all of these things all happen in. Um, cool. So let's talk about some other categories. Let's talk about IT. So IT, uh, super separate from the development side. Um, so some of the roles that I saw on this list that I would classify as IT, media and art pipeline, that's probably like that. Um, stuff like that is probably a little bit more IT side than development side. Um, I would a coordinator, anything with coordinator in it is probably IT. Um, 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 uh. Ooh, actually one more on the development side now I'm looking at it. If you have a security clearance, you can skip the line on like a lot of stuff if you're cool with working for um, like defense contractors and that kind of stuff, then it's it's very difficult to get people security cl clearances. So if you already have it from the military or something, like hit up Lockheed, hit up those kinds of companies uh, because just having a clearance will uh, put you in front of a lot of people. All right, other IT kinds of things. I don't really see a whole lot else on there. Uh, systems administrator. Um, so I'm just call it sysadmin. A lot of that stuff is more IT. So you don't write code usually in IT jobs, uh, but you are still managing technology. So at like the lower end of this, it's things like making sure that the new hires get their email accounts set up, managing like Google suite, like that, that kind of stuff. And so it's a little bit like secretarial work, uh, except it is technical and like, you can't just hire regular people off the street for it. Um, generally it doesn't pay great. And uh, IT jobs can ghetto out pretty hard. Like it, it is probably harder to jump from IT to anything else in tech. Um, also, these are easier jobs to get, especially at non-tech companies. Um, so like, that's probably one that you balance against whatever, uh, you, <laughs> how hungry you are. Um, but then at the higher ends of IT, it can be a lot more like, all right, well, how do we connect our email system with our single sign-on system? Um, how do we provision all these services? How do we manage access to all of these services? Um, managing, um, so a lot of internal infrastructure -y kinds of things and planning those out and figuring out why they're slow and like lots of that sort of stuff. And so uh, like, I, I think it's, I don't see, I don't think I've ever seen a, develop, a developer like jump into IT. Uh, I've seen a lot of IT people try to get into development with mixed success, but IT is really often like a first stop for computer science grads or information systems grads or something like that. Um, which is why like a Ben Dunn's interview yesterday, a lot of that stuff like is in that boundary between IT and development. Um, and so they, they just check to see if you know the right shit from college most of the time. But 
better money than waiting tables, that's for sure. Um, another thing I saw on, on your list was some like DevOps kinds of things. So DevOps, it, it's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, DevOps started like coming into the vocabulary around uh, six years ago or so. And before you would have an operations department that would handle your deployments and making sure you had servers and like that kind of stuff. And the problem is that the development team would make an application and they would throw it over the fence to the operations people and go, all right, deploy my fucking app. Uh, and the operations people would go like, but you coded this like shit. I need so many servers to keep this running. And the developers would go, not my fucking problem. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Or the ops people would push back and go, I can't deploy this until you fix the following things. And uh, it was a, like usually a pretty unhealthy tension. Uh, like, so when I started my career, I remember asking um, our operations department, hey, can I have a server? Because I have this app and I want to deploy it. And it took six weeks because they had like order parts from CDW and like assemble them and put them in a rack and like give me a login. And like it was a six week process to get a fucking server. Now, like that's, that's what you're getting with Heroku and Firebase and those kinds of things. Like you just click a button and you have it a second later. So, and that's only been in the last like, I don't know, five, six, seven years that that's really happened. So now we call it like those people DevOps people, which it's a misnomer because DevOps is the philosophy that developers and operations people should work together rather than being separate divisions. Um, and what actually happened was they just called their operations people DevOps people and they still kind of throw it over the fence to them. But site reliability engineer, what Kim does, that's usually like, that's the correct title for, for what that is. So Kim takes uh, applications that are in Docker containers and make sure that they're deployed and can scale. And uh, when they break and fail, that they can heal themselves correctly. But she doesn't write application code. She doesn't even know what languages the apps are written in a lot of the time. Uh, site reliability engineer is what that is. But like DevOps engineer, and that would, that's the wrong name for what that job is. Um, anything with the word infrastructure in it, it's kind of in that category. Um, automation engineer is kind of in here. I think having separate QA people is a mistake, but uh, that would kind of fall under that a little bit. Um, the uh, pipeline could also refer to deployment pipelines. That would sort of be in this. Um, the word integration is usually a clue that it might be DevOps related. And so uh, almost none of these jobs have that much to do with code. You're not writing a lot of ifs and loop statements in there, but kind of like IT, you have to have a pretty deep understanding of how the different Lego pieces fit together. Um, and uh, Kim spends a lot of her time writing configuration files. Um, and then like logging into servers and making sure their configurations are correct and that sort of stuff. Cool. Questions about DevOps? They almost feel like the more ex obscure career choice. Um, like it's, it's pretty, it's still pretty new. Um, and like a lot of companies are even like the enterprises are starting to get pretty into DevOps, um, now because surprisingly, uh, a lot of them don't like racking up their own fucking servers, uh, and like managing all that hardware. Like that's what AWS is. That's what Google cloud platform is. That's commodity work. Just make them do it. You don't want to be in the like server management business. Don't have to be. True. Um, is that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, is the system admin the same thing as like a systems engineer? Or are they different? Those are different. 
Okay. Um, a systems engineer is usually more on the development side and that's like equivalent to architect. Okay, got it. We're Thank figuring you. out how all the different pieces of your technology platform from like the application side, how those all work together. Cool. Thank you. Sysadmin is more like, my password got locked. <laughs> That's what I thought. They just sounded so similar. <laughs> Oh, one, uh, one thing that's kind of like adjacent to development that was on that list a little bit, Salesforce developer, um, the other, other platform specific one, ServiceNow, uh, WordPress dev is also probably in that category, which is like theme developer also. Those are like right on the periphery. So Salesforce development and ServiceNow developer, those are programming. Like you are writing ifs and loops and all that kind of stuff, but you're writing it in such a narrow, like controlled, constrained environment. It does very specific things. We call it DSLs or domain specific languages. Um, and like the things you do in there don't transfer out of Salesforce or WordPress or any of those kinds of things. Um, WordPress and like theme development, that's like at the bottom end of development. Those are like, a lot of them are like $30,000, $40,000 a year jobs. They're not terribly difficult um, and they're ubiquitous. WordPress powers like 80% of the internet. Um, and so especially at non-tech companies, like a lot of the tech jobs you would get in those are like WordPress kind of management stuff. Now, Salesforce is like the other side of that. Uh, there is no such thing as an unemployed Salesforce engineer and they make fucking bank. So if you want to make like six figures in your first job, like Salesforce development's not a bad way to do it. Uh, but like you got to get certifications. You have to learn their goofy fucking system inside and out. Uh, but I've had a lot of grads go into Salesforce development. Uh, it's hard to break out of Salesforce development uh, and back into just regular engineering. So uh, it can be a little bit of a ghetto too, but a fucking velvety lined one. Other questions about any of these so far? So I guess I was miss guided on IT. I just kind of always thought of IT as like the customer service of the tech world. Oh yeah, I like customer service would also be in there. Like and I saw the word um what was it? engagement manager. That's that probably goes in this category too. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's like problem solving but problem solving not in code. Correct. Problem solving with technology but not with yeah, not with code. Okay. Um, so like uh, help desk would be an example of like, of that kind of customer support. That might be internal, that might be your customers, all that stuff I'd call IT. Um, then there's, Product, I'd call that kind of another broad category. So some things in product, usually uh, uh, design is a part of this. Um, UX, UI, um, uh, product manager. A lot of that stuff uh, happens in here. Sales engineer. This is, sales engineering is like a super good job for like a fresh bootcamp grad. So uh, sales engineering is, it's sales, but you are selling to other developers usually. And so you need to be able to like talk like a developer and 
take a look at problems that people have in organizations and then come up with ways that your product uh, like helps solve those. And so it's a lot more technical than traditional sales. It pays pretty well. And like, it's another one of those always hiring kind of jobs, like all sales jobs. So like Zoom, for example, hires a ton of sales engineers um, to help people figure out how to do Zoom integrations on their platform. Or um, another organization that does lots of sales engineering is Amazon. So you're, you might go into an enterprise that has all of their own servers and you need to figure out how you can use Amazon Web Services to replace all of those. Um, so like you spend too much time sales engineering, it starts getting hard to get back into development. But like, if you just fucking hated the code part of it, <laughs> but you really liked the culture around it and the people and a lot of that kind of stuff, sales engineer might be a pretty decent path for you. Money's not bad either. Um, other product kind of roles. Oh, uh, field services is an IT thing. So like some of that stuff is Comcast and um, people that have stuff out uh, in the wild. You need to send people out in the vans to go work on those or um, municipal like government uh, tech departments will have like field services folks. Uh, other product stuff. No, yeah, that's pretty good. So um, yeah, these things are usually a little bit more product science, especially if you have a design background or a sales background or something like that. That might be attractive to you. What are the good. solutions architect fit? Would that be in product yeah, or? That would be in product. So solutions architect is kind of it's basically another word for sales engineer. As a UX, oh, go sorry, go ahead. As a UX UI designer, like, are you coding too, or is it mostly just like on the whiteboard? Like, what do people like? Like, what's I don't know. I know there's like a whole separate program for it. So, sure. how much overlap do you have? It changes like place to place. In a lot of places, a UI engineer is like their word for front end developer. Uh, in a lot of places, like I worked with a a UI engineer once who didn't, who'd never worked in digital products before. And so she gave me this uh, design that I was supposed to implement and everything was specified in like uh, uh, picas and points. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Those are measures of like, like a, I think a, a point is like an eighth of an inch or something like that. It's like, <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no thing like that on, on pixels. Wrong P, it's pixels. <laughs> right. So um, you'll also have UI people like that. UX people also are oftentimes not, not even especially technical. Um, a lot of UX folks consider like technical expertise a nice to have. Uh, and UX itself is like split into a bunch of different things. So for, so for example, like one of the jobs in UX is researcher. So a UX researcher is somebody who's finding out um, stuff about patterns and whether or not the patterns um, uh, are actually user friendly. So, like one of my favorite resources for that is um, the Nielsen Norman Group. So they do. Uh, they're they're a research firm, and let me see if I can find some examples. Augmented and virtual reality versus computer screens. Are they better than, than just regular screens? Or um, uh, the efficacy of dot voting, which is like a, it's a customer research strategy. The lawnmower eye tracking thing. So like, how do users use these pages? So they're, are there a research firm that does training and stuff around that? So like, that's a, 
Uh, that, that's one of the jobs you can have in UX. It can also be like applying the, the patterns that you get out of that research and saying like, all right, well, we have all of these elements of our application. How should users navigate through them? What, what are the patterns that users are expecting to use? Because one of the things that makes design different than art is that you're not supposed to surprise people. <laughs> you're supposed to like match a user's expectations. So a UX expert is someone who knows what those expectations are and knows how to apply them uh, in your particular application. Um, I, I, so for anybody who doesn't know, I hosted a UX podcast for like three years. And in that time, I, I met maybe 5% of the people that we interviewed knew anything about programming. But some of them, like Sarah Drasner, is like a programming superhero. So like they're out there, but it's pretty rare. So I guess kind of to piggyback on that, mm -hmm. like one thing as someone who loves design, mm -hmm. but I also love coding and I want to be a coder. I, one thing I'm nervous about on things where they're like that as a job is I don't want to get to the point where like, oh yeah, cool, I'm doing UX UI, but I'm not coding anymore. Right. Like, how do you, can you find a balance in that? Cause like my design is incorporated to being a dev. It's just part right. of it. No, you, you totally can. Um, so startups are a really good place to make that happen. Uh, because like, if, imagine you have a five person startup. It's very difficult to justify hiring a designer who can't do anything but design. Um, so those smaller firms, like you're like, hey, I'm a really good designer, and also I'm pretty handy with a text editor. Like, you're exactly who they're looking for. Um, and like in my last job at Health Scholars, our designer was also a front end dev. Um, so he did about fifty fifty on that. See, that sounds ideal. Yeah, like your uh, your best bet is probably to find something that's that probably called front end dev or front end engineer or something. And they're expecting you to come in with expertise in these things. Cause you'll also find plenty of places that are like, I'm looking for a front end engineer, no CSS required or something like that. Or your CSS is only implementing somebody else's design. So like you need to like look at what they're looking for pretty specifically, but those jobs do exist. Why are people so afraid of CSS? I have no fucking clue uh, because they're dumb babies. Like you'll find so many people that can do the most insanely complicated things in development and just crumple when you ask them to do anything with CSS. Like it's not easier or harder than any other thing in development. Like stop crying and just figure it the fuck out. Um, cool. Another big category is data. So um, there's data analysts. There are data scientists and data engineers. And if you ask a data person, they'll say that these are three completely opposite jobs, which I think is incredibly precious. <laughs> um, but broadly speaking, an anal a data analyst is somebody who takes existing data and then uh, gathers insights from it and does uh, visualizations and uses like statistical techniques to take data and uh, derive meaning from it. Uh, an engineer, data engineer is somebody who designs what uh, like the data collection process and um, how the data is structured and a lot of that kind of stuff. And a data scientist is usually somewhere in between those. So data scientists um, a lot of times are, um, I heard somebody describe it once as better, programmer than, better programmers than any statistician and better statisticians than any programmer. Uh, so analysts are usually using pre-made tools uh, to, to do some of that data analysis. Uh, data scientists are often writing those tools or like the algorithms or like that, that kind of stuff. And so like those are a family, I would say machine learning tends to travel in very similar circles. Um, data scientists in particular tend to like um, uh, get into machine learning. 
data of all of these categories is the most gate kept, I think, of all of these. It probably like pound for pound pays the most also, but um, of all of the different parts of tech, this one feels the most like academia to me because it's almost everybody in, in those positions either has a PhD, a minimum master's engineer. They way over respect credentials. Um, they also super narrowly slice up their work. Um, like Precious with a capital P, <laughs> everybody I've worked with in that part of the industry is just, just real kids gloves. Um, and so even if you are very good at the skills needed for any of these, modeling would be in here also. Like I'm a, I'm a data modeler to beat the band and I probably couldn't get a job as like a junior data modeler um, just based on like not having enough academic credentials. Um, so I think that you will probably have a hard time pivoting into that if you don't already have some of that in your, uh, on your CV. Um, but it is out there and it is part of this industry. Um, other stuff on here. K, 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 K. SEO is kind of not real anymore. So like it used to be that you want to do all these things to make sure that your website shows up on the first page of Google. Google doesn't like that people were doing that. Um, and so the way that algorithm works now is it's very personalized. So like what I see in my search results are not what you see in your search results. Um, that makes it kind of pointless to try to game the system. And every time somebody figures out a way to game the system, Google like plugs it. So don't get a job as an SEO engineer. That's I guess what I'm saying. Um, ooh, uh, I would call this a, a different category altogether. Put this like in probably more like, I'm gonna call it traditional engineering. There might be a better name for this. So traditional engineering um, embedded would fall in there. These are people who make like, um, your TV apps, stuff like that. The software that might not even have like a screen or something, but like uh, all these digital devices around your house, like they also have software that works for them. Uh, Alexa, um, Google, like the, uh, the, the Google mini and stuff, the Google home, mm -hmm. like those, those also need software. Um, so those are usually embedded engineers that work on that. And usually you have like, you're, I've never met an embedded engineer that wasn't also kind of handy with a soldering iron. So you probably know at least a little bit about electronics. Um, the bio and like chemical stuff. Again, if you have that kind of background, like Paige, for example, uh, or Ahmed, like if you also are a pretty killer programmer, that can, that can put you in some pretty unique opportunities um, in like the sciences. Um, the, see what else? There's uh, government stuff can kind of fall into this. So there's actually, there's a, a, a gigs posting in Denver Devs yesterday, I think from like Jared Polis's um, like a special digital SWAT team organization. I've actually talked with those cats a few times. They're kind of cool. Um, but if you, it, it's similar to these things where if you know a lot about um, civics and bureaucracies and like how to get things done in government and you're a programmer, like that's who they want for that job um, because they can't just do whatever they want but they're trying to like think like a startup and be nimble and agile like a lot of those things within government and so if you worked in policy or something like you might actually be a pretty good fit for that and in my experience a lot of these 
uh, kinds of engineers are not up to date on like what's, uh, I don't know, what's really happening in software. They're more closely aligned with TVs or phones or the sciences or government, and they are also programmers. Um, so like if you were worried that you'd never be able to like stay involved in civics or something, that might be a, a decent route for you. Or like a, a lot of those engineers also worked on things like COVID reporting uh, and tracking and some of those kinds of things. Um, the ethical hacker thing. So I'd call that like research. Um, Cybersecurity is probably kind of in a, in a similar boat. And then, oh, one more thing I'll throw on here is consulting. So um, some different kinds of consulting stuff, freelancing, just taking contracts. You can have a happy, healthy career doing nothing but this for the rest of your life. Um, and it's the, just like freelancing in any, any other industry, like you spend half of your time selling and just trying to get work and the other half of the time working. Uh, your contracts get canceled at any fucking moment, but like hour for hour, you make way more money um, and you can work on whatever you want and fire your customers if they suck and like, that kind of thing. Um, there's also agency work. So this is like, you, somebody hires the agency to make a product for them or um, to update their website or uh, help them with something like that. And so what's kind of neat about those jobs is um, it's service work, not product work. And so you never end up working on the same thing. Like those consulting jobs can be one week long, but you're working for an agency. So like you just go on to the next project after that. And so you got to be a language polyglot, you got to be a framework polyglot, you got to be able to work with pretty much whatever you're given. Um, and you got to be able to like get a lot done in a very short period of time. Um, as you might imagine, the culture in agencies is not always awesome. It's not across the board. There's plenty of awesome agencies, but um, they're probably more likely than not to have crunch time and like weird shit like that going on. Um, but if like the fast pacedness sounds like interesting to you, like that's out there. And um, very difficult to get work as like as a fresh grad uh, because as a consultant, you are the product. And so if you don't have any experience, like those are legitimately very difficult jobs to get. Um, they're much easier to get uh, with experience, but even then consulting work and product work tend to be like, one of those big career decisions that you make as a developer. And so I interviewed for a, uh, a, a, an agency uh, not so very long ago. And that was like what they kept grilling me about is like, you've worked in product like pretty much your whole career. You sure you wanna do agency life? Um, so you have some of that. I'd say the cyber stuff often falls under that also. Um, you might be hired to audit somebody's security uh, without necessarily being a full-time member of their team. Um, yeah, there's like kind of a big overview of all these different categories of careers. Ask me some questions about them. I'm a little bit more curious about the freelancing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you said it was probably pretty difficult to get into if you don't have a lot of experience. But yeah, I guess like agency work is freelancing work, uh, much less so. Okay. It sounds really scary because, you know, you don't have like anyone else to fall back on. And what if you don't meet whoever you're working with expectations or the product doesn't line up to their yep. standards? Like, is you that are like understanding what is difficult about freelancing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, are, you are reading that correctly. So like the best freelancers I know are uh, also very sharp business people. So you, you apply all the skills that you would, you normally do in sales and customer service and uh, management and all of those things to prevent those things from happening. 
Gotcha. Yeah, it's definitely not just like a, I, I get a slip of, slip of paper under my door that has a picture of the thing I'm supposed to make and then I sort of push it back. It's a very like, it's a very salesy kind of job. Would it probably be easier to get a development job with an employer and then if you wanted to go into freelancing? That's more common, but what I've seen is that a lot of grads, especially for these non-tech jobs, like sometimes they don't need a full-time dev, but they do need a new website. Uh, you can do a lot of that stuff on spec too. You're like, hey man, I've been a loyal Prost customer for a long time and I've noticed that your website's a little bit whack. So uh, would you be interested in a redesign? So like you can find things like that. There's also like people on Craigslist and like lo lots of things like that that you can get freelance work. And I see grads do that all the time. Uh, and like, that's a great way to, to get resume experience and like, and, and those kinds of things. There's a really interesting uh, incident that happened like on LinkedIn. I know there's people abroad in different countries looking, mm -hmm. software engineers looking for work. Yep. And uh, someone hit me up <laughs> and was asking if basically like, if I can just be like the middleman and yep. they'll create the app, do whatever. Correct. and I'll get paid out a certain amount. But I mean, that sounds sketchy. I don't know if illegal to me, but. Uh, it's okay, so th that's called the Upwork scam. Um, it's not actually a scam. It is exactly what it sounds like. Um, they, uh, so for anybody who hasn't seen this, uh, you get a developer in China who goes, hey, so I don't know if you've ever heard of Upwork before, but uh, if you would make a profile on there, um, all you got to do is copy and paste this stuff in. You get the clients in. You're the face of the client. So I just need you to talk to them and then I'll do all the work. So the reason they're doing that is that uh, developers in Sri Lanka and in India and in China and uh, Southeast Asia, a lot of them are not very good fucking developers. So um, people know that. And they like they want to work with an American, or they want to work with a good engineer, and they're skeptical about the like Chinese cost cutter engineers, and so that's why they want to use your name. Also, like Upwork knows all of this, and so it makes them use a different part of the site that, unsurprisingly, nobody goes to. So um, they'll try to like launder this through you. It's not illegal. It is, I think, against the Upwork terms of service. Um, if a customer finds out that you did it, they would be pissed. Like, don't do it is the, like, the bottom line on it. It's it's not worth your time. Yeah, uh, I, I figured it might be like good experience to like learn how to start doing freelancing stuff. And I don't know. I, I wouldn't like you'll you'll get a customer who remembers your name and like remembers that you because here's the thing. They're fucking they're bad engineers. The thing they're going to make is going to suck. And then the person's going to like, this isn't what we talked about at all. What is this shit? Uh, and then like your job will be to defend it. <laughs> it's, it's not a position you want to be in. Okay. Thanks for the advice. Yep. Um, we actually just had to kick three people off of Denver devs for the Upwork scam today. Um, cool. Other questions about any of this? Um, Kyle, have you, or anybody, have you guys seen the, like, programs like Reviture where they, they make you sign, like, a two-year contract, and then you, they basically control where you live and where you work for, and you're, like, capped at a salary, like, usually pretty low, yep. relatively, so do you have, like, any comments on that, or? Uh, it's, it's probably better than not eating, but uh, it's a very old timey approach to getting people into software development. Like that's another one of those like computer science grads can't program. And so, you know, all right, well, how are we going to get people into the company? Well, we'll lock them into these shitty contracts. And by the time they realize that how, how bad the deal is, now eh, they only got another year on it. We expect them to quit on the day their like contract is up. I don't, you guys can do better, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's also not a scam. It's just not great. That's also true with some of the places like Infosys that Ben was uh, applying to or um, Vertifor. 
where they'll like put you through another school when they hire you. So it's just like this, except they pay you. And it's usually learn some dumb technology that they use like Java or something. So you go to another boot camp basically. But if you quit inside of a year or a year and a half or two years or something, like you owe them money or something. Again, like it probably beats waiting tables, but uh, I would aim higher first at least. <laughs> And like, also, those aren't scams. That's, it's exactly what it, what they say it is. Um, but yeah, that's there's definitely some trade offs with it. Other questions? So my big career advice to you for your first job in particular is what everybody wants coming out of a code school is a junior developer job at a startup. And unsurprisingly, those are the hardest fucking jobs maybe on this entire list to get other than maybe the data stuff. Um, especially if you're like, and I want it to be at a cool uh, office downtown with a pool and a ping pong table. And yes. if, if people, Get those jobs, they're real, they exist. But you'll never see a startup post a job for a junior engineer, never. Uh, and it's, it's not that they don't hire them, it's that. Uh, if you're looking for somebody and uh, to, to hire somebody for a job, internal transfer, we already have the person in the company. They're just gonna change their job. That's the easiest way to do it. Next easiest way to do it is probably like internal referral. Some of the company knows somebody. Uh, cool, awesome, bring them in, man. Now, uh, next after that would probably be something like, um, like uh, external referral. Hey, by the way, we're looking for a dev right now. So if you know somebody, like, uh, we'd love to talk to them. They might even like uh, pay you for them. So like, you'll get a lot of those on LinkedIn. Or someone's like, hey, if this job isn't for you, I'll give you 500 bucks if you can refer to somebody who is the right person. Uh, a closed posting. So this would be something like on uh, Denver Devs, uh, gigs. That's a, it's public ish, but like you can't just Google search to, to find it. And then all the way down this list is a job board. So from cheapest to most expensive, also time. Um, reliability from like, I know I, I've already worked with this person before down to like, well, they know how to use a web browser. <laughs> um, so this is like an order of preference for pretty much any company. Um, so if you see a junior rails developer, like on a job board, that means none of these things worked. That means that's probably a bad job. <laughs> Like, um, and also if you say I'm looking for a junior rails developer, Mern stack react, any of the stuff that's like really common with code schools, you are about to get flooded with hundreds of the lowest effort applications you've ever seen. Um, just drowning in them. All the people that don't want to go to meetups, don't want to talk to anyone the meetups, by the way, that's external referral. Um, don't want to network, uh, don't want to, uh, work on open source projects, don't want to do the like code for Denver nights, all the people who don't want to do any of that stuff and just refresh monster.com looking for junior rails dev. Um, that's who applies for all of those jobs. Um, and you'll have such a hard time sorting out a good application from a bad one that you just don't see those jobs get posted. 
Ta-da. All right. Go get some lunch. Cheers. Thanks so much, Kyle. This was this was great. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle.